generating. Um, and then the third force that came along locally was what Marlene was talking about, and that was, of course, the Royal Commission uh, in, in 1988, which, which began to hold hearings and therefore brought together all of these people who had been concerned about, it, about their own areas and trying to find ways in which to, to do what they could. Those hearings were enormous for those who attended them. They were wonderful, wonderful learning sessions. People had grassroots, but we also had people who were practitioners in various trades and fields, and the, the, the mess of information and thinking that, that was brought to bear, we had no trouble having many, many, many reports. But there were two reports, of course, that captured the public imagination and covered, more particularly, captured the imagination of these two governments. And they were the, the two, the two reports, the first one being watershed and the second one being regeneration. Um, and they had in, in them far-reaching recommendations for the areas of concern that we had. Um, it, it established, first of all, a kind of a philosophical basis. We don't easily in Canada uh, talk about philosophy. We leave it to the Greeks, other people. But we think that, but on the other hand, you, you, you have to have some sense of what your basic philosophy is if you're going to try and do something practical. And so we used to repeat like a mantra what our basic philosophy was. Everything is connected to everything else. We are responsible, therefore, for the consequences of our actions. Human beings are part of nature and not separate from it. And therefore, the idea that you can move in, use up, and move on is no longer acceptable. We almost, like a religion, repeat that to people wherever we went. We call it the ecosystem approach to the waterfront and the building of cities. Somewhat grand, but it worked. I remember uh, Suzanne and I going up to Crowley Township, trying to sell all this to the folks in Crowley. And we went to all, in, in the early days, it was not an easy sell because it was new. And we were from Toronto, which was not helpful. <laughs> <laughs> from that basic philosophy, uh, we, we, I remember spending a couple of, uh, or about a week, but at any rate, for some time, how do we get, make principles, how do we take that basic philosophy and make principles out of it so people can use them? And we thought, uh, our, knowing our people, one word principles would probably be as best we could get away with. And so we said, I think we're going to add it in the slide here, waterfront development needs to be clean and green and connected and open and all of those nine principles. Not every waterfront had to have 100% of each one, but they had to at least look at those and see what they could do within their own area with respect to those principles. But we also knew that having a philosophy and the principles weren't sufficient. We needed to have people actually doing it because as Marlene pointed out, our operating philosophy was that we learn by doing. And therefore, we needed to make sure that we could find a way in which we could get these, this philosophy and these principles into the thinking of most people and into the manuals of professional practitioners. That was the challenge. And how do we do that? The trail. The trail became our way in which we get that philosophy, those principles, and actually have people doing something about what they were interested in doing anyhow. And therefore, when we went to the provincial government, we had no trouble. Ruth Greer, uh, no, longer, no longer in government, but she was our champion at the time. And she allowed us to, to go in that little circle a little further, maybe up to Pickering. All right? But we knew from our understanding of the ecosystem approach that if we were going to deal with the waterfront, we want to do anything of any enduring value. We had to understood, had to understand it as part of a watershed. And so it was with that. It, uh, that's why a couple of years later, I remember we were out in Trenton. Someone from Queens Park phoned us, "How are you doing in Trenton?" <laughs> it's supposed to be. But, but on, on the other hand, what it did do was we, we, we went where the philosophy and the environment took us. And therefore, we had to adopt some way in which we would go about the building of the trail. Seems obvious now, 
It wasn't obvious then. We had to sort of just start. And we knew a couple of things. One, first of all, the provincial government, and we were both a federal and provincial the Royal Commission at the time, the provincial governments understood the trail park, but there were elements of Queen's Park said, we will give you expropriation authority. Oddly enough, we had to fight that like crazy. I, my roots are in municipal government, and I knew that if you showed up in a municipality with expropriation powers, it would take you at least 20 years to get anywhere. And so our first operating tactic or strategy was to make sure that people understood that this was not a centralized plan for this trail. This was one that was going to depend wholly on local planning, local pride, and local appreciation of what was possible, and connecting them. That became it. It was like a Lego set. A Lego set. We also understood that it was really important that teaching and learning became the major way in which we would develop understanding and practical approaches to problems. Not sending out manuals to people, but we had endless numbers of seminars where we would invite people in, and whether you're from a village, a hamlet, or a large city, you got the same treatment, and people who could afford to buy the talent shared it with people who could not. And that gave us an enormous strength because we were able to spread the knowledge as we learned it, and we were therefore able to learn by doing it. We also understood something you now understand in, uh, instinctively now, it's part of what, what, what you're doing, and that is that it's really important to, uh, to combine cultural heritage with natural heritage. Our interest, my interest, was natural heritage, still is, but I understood we learned as we went along, that unless we could combine cultural heritage with natural heritage, we would not be able to move the, the art sticks. We also understood that this was not simply, and I know that there's a lot of bikers and hikers, but it was not, this was not a trail just for hiking and biking. The purpose of the trail was that. But it was also to have people appreciate that the knuckles of how you build urban places is that you have to combine ecology, economy, and community. And that's, that's what the trail should be doing. Indeed, we used to call it, in simple terms, the fat trail, which was ecology, economy, and community, and the skinny trail, that was hiking and biking. Though bringing those together would have enduring value for all the people, certainly in the Lake Ontario case. Well, it, as you've seen, and we're not this is not just simply bravado. There are lots, there's lots of work to be done on the trail as it, as it exists today. As I was pointing out, that filling the gaps, reinventing, re-understanding what a new generation might want, not simply what the old one thought was important. So we need to still cultivate the old trail, but at the same time, of course, we need to move forward and find out how we can extend it. My own view is work. you're going to have a wonderful day trying to figure out where we go. Let me put in my dibs early. Three thoughts. Make sure you're not giving up on the old trail. Still, as uh, grandmother used to say, old friends are golden, new friends are silver. Stick with the gold as well. Make sure the trails are reinvented for a new generation, but fix those gaps. Secondly, you have to, I think, stretch out, what's the slogan, further. I don't know, I mean, I, would, I think it's limiting if you stop at the Great Lakes. I would go to the Great Lakes. And I, I would go wherever you can, because there is, I think, around a new appreciation that we have both quality, water quality, and water quantity issues in the Great Lakes. And it's good to get in early because you can find it in communities all around the Great Lakes Basin try to grapple again 25 years later with how they now go about it. So I would extend the trail, take it where it needs to go, and for sure that's the Great Lakes Basin. And finally, a small plea from my generation at any rate, and for those who paid attention to ecological and environmental matters in those days.
do not forget that the trail is about ecology, economy, and community while you're having a good time on your bike. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks,